Uh, thank you, Leslie. Uh, good morning. As I wait for my slides to come up, uh, I come from a small private engineering school. So some of the things that I'm going to say, uh, you know, you need to take them in that context. Uh, uh, you know, some of the challenges we have might be a little different from what you have. Some of the opportunities we have might be a little different. Uh, that said, uh, one of my big uh, reasons for being here is to ask you some questions from which I hope to learn and, uh, uh, you know, to help build our program. So, uh, who am I? Um, I come from all over the place. Uh, <laughs> I did my bachelor's in Kenya, uh, my master's in the UK, went back to Kenya, worked for many years, and then I finally made the move to the US where I did my PhD at the University of New Hampshire, uh, and then somehow I ended up in the Midwest, Indiana. Uh, so I do have some uh, background in terms of, uh, you know, global engineering, knowing how uh, especially the education component is handled in three continents. So um, besides my own uh, 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 education, I have organized some, uh, stu uh, not study abroad, study visits uh, to Kenya. Uh, uh, this last year I spent it in Zambia. First time I was going there for full year I was at the Copper Belt University. And that was eye-opening in some respects. Having been away from that part of the world for the last, uh, what, 15 years, going back, you say, wow, things are this different? So, anyway, uh, at Rose Harmon, we, um, we came to realization about three, three four, five years ago uh, that you know what? We need all of our students to have a global uh, experience. Uh, now, Rose Hammond, for those of you who don't know, has been a very homogeneous school, you know, uh, Midwest-centered, and, you know, most of our students probably haven't gone beyond the next state. Brilliant students, okay? So we had to try and uh, break that. So uh, I got these two quotes that I think uh, might go a little overboard, but I think they, <laughs> they capture... Uh, the spirit of what we're trying to do. Um, uh, so especially the second one that says, uh, there's, no, there's no more important skill to succeed in the 21st century than a global mindset, you know? Uh, now, Ross Harmon has been ranked number one, you know, in the World News uh, Report for the last 17 years. Uh, and the question for us is, okay, so wh what is the next thing for us? And we found that we actually lagging behind in this regard. So uh, three years ago, as part of our strategic plan, uh, we decided that all of our students need to have a meaningful international experience. You know? Now the question is, what is meaningful? How are you going to measure that? You know? What you're seeing right now is uh, uh, our current definition of meaningful. Okay, the three core things that we're saying we need to capture are that it needs to be substantial. It needs to be demonstrable. Uh, it needs to be certifiable, because if you're requiring all of your students to have it, you need to have some way of checking off that yes, your experience does you know, rise to the threshold. And it needs to be accessible to all of our students. You know? So you start um, handling things of uh, finances, uh, mindsets, you know, some students don't want to travel, uh, and so on. So uh, that's our definition. I don't know, what is your definition of meaningful international experience? All right? Now, as part of our strategic plan, uh, this is 2013, 2018, uh, I'd like for you to focus on strategy 4C. Uh, we're a small school, we're ambitious, but we're not, we're not quite working on that yet, the physical presence. I know some of the big schools already have physical presence out there. Uh, now, what we are doing 
is uh, strategy 4A, the campus culture environment, um, uh, trying to be all inclusive, especially with the increasing number of international students that we're getting. Um, and then 4B, which is really the, uh, the, the target for our discussion today, provide more opportunities for community members to experience the world and its diversity. Okay, our students, our faculty, our staff. Um, and it's in 4B that it was decided that, you know what, all of our students need a meaningful international experience. Um, as part of the uh, uh, Institute Learning Outcomes, you know, that tie in with ABET, uh, we have a culture and global awareness uh, outcome requirements. Okay, uh, and uh, like I'm sure most engineering schools have, um, our goal is to try and get to a point where our students meet criteria in C1, okay, where they have met and probably experienced some, you know, cross-cultural challenge uh, that is international in nature. Because I mean, you could go down uh, uh, to the inner city and get a cross-cultural experience, right? But it's not quite international. Uh, I've had colleagues make that argument. Do you know what? International, uh, meaningful international experience doesn't have to mean that you travel. You know, you can have that on your own campus. Uh, is that possible? I don't know. Hope to get some answers from you guys. Now, some of the programs that we have uh, uh, organized or participated in, uh, what you can see, you've got faculty-led uh, programs. Um, the first couple, um, Computing in a Global Society, Chinese View of Computing, those were courses, okay? They do the theory over here, and then they travel to, uh, in that, the first one was in Sweden and Turkey. They do Sweden in the fall, Turkey in the spring. Uh, Chinese view, uh, they, uh, they do that I think once a year. Kenya field study, we did that as part of the uh, geography of Africa course. Um, Japan study program, that is done yearly, uh, and so on. So, and then we have more substantive programs that are um, um, longer in nature, you know, dual degrees, uh, programs at the master's level with OM University or at the BS level in which uh, you've got students taking two, year, uh, two years of their program at Rose and then the other two years over in Germany and you know the, the, the German cohort doing the same, you know, they switch. Um, and that seems to be working well. Of course the challenge with all of this is that we're trying to make sure that our 2,000 students all have a meaningful international experience. So far, I think we're only doing like 10%, you know? Um, and some of the other programs that we, uh, that have really caught on uh, on campus include Engineers Without Borders, uh, regular exchange programs, you know, with uh, our partner universities, uh, and uh, uh, some of these global uh, education um, organizers like Global Engineering Education Exchange. Uh, now, after this, I might be talking to Leslie about uh, getting a program on board as well. All right? Absolutely. So the challenges that uh, uh, we are grappling with is, one, the metrics for determining the success uh, of a meaningful international experience that cover the whole spectrum of these experiences, okay? Um, number one. Number two. How do you make sure that it's meaningful? You know? Um, uh, some of the things we've tried is make sure that you have some pre-work before they travel, uh, some reflection activities, and then when they come back, maybe write a report, uh, trying to reflect on what they, uh, the experience was. Uh, number three, very challenging, how do you make it affordable? Especially in the light of the fact that you want all of your students to be able to go. Um, and we're working on establishing equivalency of transfer credits. Uh, for some schools, you know, in Europe, 
um, uh, some of the Asian countries, fairly straightforward. But you go to some countries like in Africa, they are on a different program. You know, they have courses that run the whole year. You know, so how do you uh, uh, make you know those equivalences? Number one. Then number two. Uh, or would you find it easier to just black that out and ignore that whole section of the world uh, uh, and not bring them into the conversation? So uh, establishing equivalency of credits, ensuring that we are touching the globe, you know, the whole globe. Um, and then the other thing is getting all students, even those who don't want, to have a meaningful international experience. Some students just don't want to travel, you know? Um, last, and I think most challenging, is how do we build this into a curricula in a way that does not disrupt the graduation schedule for most students? When should this happen? Okay, what I'm showing over here is an analysis that we did, uh, uh, I think about two years ago, showing that for my department, the junior year would be the most preferred uh, uh, it still has issues, okay? We, we still need to work on making it easy for the students to know where they can take those courses and, you know, uh, so it's, it's some work. So the when uh, is, is important. Um, thank you. So I'd like for you guys to think about those questions so that as we get back to the question time, uh, hopefully you can provide some answers. Thank you.